Good morning. It's Monday and a little later than usual. It's 9 a.m. So I um, decided to try a little social experiment and see how many of you would rather meet a little later on Monday mornings. And uh, so we might play around with a couple different times. And thanks for making the move with me and being a part of Monday Morning Mojo every week. Um, this is really such fun for me, and I'm glad that so many of you have been a part of this community now. It's going to be three years this May, um, and you know I'm always challenged to find content and exciting things to talk about, meaningful things to talk about with you. And um, you know my my goal as a coach is to connect with people, inspire them, and help them to think a little differently and offer some different perspectives. So. Uh, this platform is a great way for me to do that, and it's a gift that I like to give out every week. So thanks for being a part of my group coaching every week. <laughs> and, you know, I think the person who gets most of the coaching is me, um, because as what happens most times, what I'm teaching at any given time is usually what I'm learning or experiencing myself. And today's topic is no different. Uh, we're going to talk today about developing self-discipline and really looking at what does it take to be persistent and, and really see it through with your goals. Um, I think there are a lot of things that get wrapped up in discipline and the conversation around discipline. And, uh, you know, it certainly is mindset and it certainly is about uh, the habits that will will build to consistency that allows you to see results. And, you know, look, we all know that person, right? That person who seems to just really be on, right? They get up early, they're in the gym, uh, they get to work early, they are, you know, really uh, purposeful and uh, successful, they avoid distractions, they, they focus their energy on only the high value things uh, that will bring results. They're, they're taking a class in their free time. They're, uh, you know, baking cupcakes for the kids at school and doing all these things uh, that leave us feeling exhausted as they even just share details of their day. And so I, I think that this is an opportunity, right, for us to look at what makes that possible for someone, right? And it doesn't mean that they're Wonder Woman or Superman. It doesn't mean that they're any smarter than you are. Um, it just means that they have figured out how to, to really be consistent with their time and how to focus their time so that they can achieve more. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. And like I said, this is definitely um, an area that I'm always looking to improve for myself and develop. And, um, you know, self-discipline, I think, is an opportunity for all of us, right? So I'm going to give you a quote. And I have it here. I thought this was good. You can never conquer the mountain. You can only conquer yourself. You can never conquer the mountain. You can only conquer yourself. And all the things that we want to accomplish can, start, can seem like a big mountain to climb. And I think that we, many of us will look at that and say, okay, how is the mountain, you know, designed? Which way can I get up? What's the right way to scale it? how high is it, what altitude, this and that, right? But at the end of the day, the, the, the way you'll get to the top is by looking at yourself and what your capabilities are. And so you can never conquer the mountain, you can only conquer yourself. So why is it that some people seem to achieve so much more than others more consistently, right? And how can we accomplish as much as we want to in our professional and personal lives? And I think, you know, the answer does lie in self-discipline. So that's what uh, we're going to talk about today. Because self-discipline is what will push you past the intention, right? We all start out with good intentions. We all have goals in mind. And it's the self-discipline that will push you forward. And so that's why this becomes so important. So self-discipline is the ability to push yourself forward, stay motivated, and take action. Self-discipline is the ability to push yourself forward, stay motivated, and take action. And here's the rest of it, my friends. Regardless of how you might be feeling physically or emotionally. Yeah, so when we don't feel like it, self-discipline is what makes us push through that and do it anyway. 
Um, and so that's how we show up. And that's how we become more intentional because we choose to pursue something usually that is better for us, something that is a greater opportunity, uh, something that might be healthier, something that is going to move us forward, right? So our intention is not the problem, right? So our intention is there. So I'll just share with you, I'm working through um, improving and getting healthier in a lot of ways. So I'm working on this new um, diet, I'll call it a diet, but it's really just a, a different approach to food because there are certain foods that create inflammation for me and certain foods that, that don't. So I'm making that shift and it's been challenging. This is, you know, again, why I'm talking about self-discipline because I've been working on this for myself. It's been a little challenging the last week and yet I feel better already. And so here's the thing. There were a couple of times when I wasn't feeling so great. It was giving me a headache. I was feeling tired, whatever the story was, but I had to push through it. Who can relate to that? Right. Who knows that that's been a, a, a situation they've experienced. And maybe it's not the same situation. Maybe it was a work project. Maybe it was, um, you know, another goal that you had in terms of saving money, financial opportunities, right? And so self-discipline is the ability to push ourselves forward, to stay motivated and take action regardless of how we're feeling, right? Physically or emotionally, because we've got to push through that to get to the other side. So that is what shows up that shows that you're intentional, really, because I think a lot of us think that when we create the plan or the idea, it shows our intentionality. It's a start, but what really is showing your intentionality is the follow through and for you to stick to it, regardless of how you might be feeling. Okay, so here's the other question I've gotten in the past um, in coaching. Isn't this just about motivation? Nope. Self-discipline is different from self-motivation or willpower. Um, willpower, first of all, is very short-lived. Willpower is fleeting. Uh, you can kind of talk yourself into something and say, I've got willpower, but it's not going to sustain you. So motivation and willpower could be somewhat the fuel behind self-discipline, but self-discipline is an act of persistence. Self-discipline is an act of persistence where motivation, willpower, it's, it's very fluid, right? Would you agree? There are times when you feel more motivated in the day than others, right? So it's, it's kind of fluid. So self-discipline is really um, more about the action and the consistent action, as I said, regardless of how you're feeling, all right? So why should this be a topic? Why should we work on self-discipline? You know, if you have any thoughts about that, you can use the chat or those of you on Zoom, if you want to speak to me, that's cool. Um, but why is this so important? Why do you think we need to develop our self-discipline? And I think that one of the reasons why is so that we can live a bigger life, so that we can live a more fulfilling, more challenging life, and so that we can see results sooner than later which I think will inspire us to want to set new goals, right? Like, remember a time, think about a time when you set a, a goal that at, at the onset you thought, wow, this is a big goal and you accomplished it. I'm sure there's one, right? Do you all have one in mind? How did that feel afterwards when you accomplished that goal, right? And did it, did it inspire you to think about something next? Did it inspire you to say, okay, now that I got that or I achieved this, I would like to set a goal for, for, for this now, right? So it starts this momentum. Another reason why we want to work on our self-discipline is so that we can create results that are quality, right? We want to put out, do you want to put out your best uh, effort? Do you want to be looked at as a leader, as an expert in your area? Do you want to put out high quality work? Right, because I think it's interesting when we ask the question, is your intention to be average? Is your intention every day to just get through the day and just be average and coast through and uh, give a minimum? I would think most of us would say absolutely not. Yet are the actions that we're focused on just producing average results? Would our, our commitment to self-discipline actually bring higher level results, higher quality work, 
going to mute one of my friends here. And uh, does self-discipline enable you to keep going, right? To keep keep going towards greater successes, greater achievements. You know, we talk about getting to our next level. I think self-discipline is what builds your your skill, what builds your mindset, what builds your tenacity, what builds your grit, right? So that your resiliency wants to go to the next level, right? Even if you don't know how, right? It doesn't mean that you become, just because you're a self-disciplined person doesn't mean you have all the answers either. It just means that you have the fuel behind you, the willingness to want to continue to persevere. And I think that's a word we don't use enough in our own language, right? So write that down, persevere. Do you want to be someone who perseveres, who sees it through, who fights through uh, and learns how to continue to um, get to the top of the mountain because you're looking at your own ability, your own capability, your own strength and improving on that all the time. So I think we can improve learning and we can enhance our performance when we are more self-disciplined, right? So that's an opportunity. And studies have shown that, I have something, some notes here. Studies have shown that students with a high degree of self-discipline retain more knowledge than those without. So I'll just say that again. Studies have shown that students with a high degree of self-discipline retain more knowledge than those without self-discipline. So would it stand to reason that as we develop our self-discipline, we actually become better learners and we can actually enhance our own performance? So that I thought was pretty interesting. So if you are, are vibing with me on this, how many of you are feeling like this is a good topic to talk about, right? So how do you develop more self-discipline? All right, I'm gonna give you a couple of things to think about this morning. How do you develop self-discipline? So the first thing is you have to have a goal, right? Choose a goal. Let's start with one goal. Use this as um, a real live experiment, right? So choose a goal right now that is really important to you. I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to think about it. It could be a professional career goal. It could be a personal goal, uh, like something around your health. It could be a financial goal. Um, it could be something around a relationship, spiritual. What is the goal? Write it down right now. And we're gonna use that goal as a focus point. And it's going to be the focus to help you develop your self-discipline. All right. So does everyone have a goal in mind? So maybe the goal is that you want to exercise more. Okay. And some of us are going to say, okay, I want to exercise more. So I'm going to work out at the gym every day for an hour. And some people do, yet you have to ask yourself, is that going to actually get you there? And are you going to follow through? Do you have the discipline to get through that? So sometimes we have to look at our goal and ask ourselves, is the goal attainable? Because if the goal is not attainable, then we set ourselves up right away for some friction and some failure around it. And so in doing so, we never give ourselves a chance to develop self-discipline. Does that make sense to you? Yes. So what, make sure that this goal is smart, right? We've talked about that here before. Specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely, okay? So I'm going to tell you right now, it's okay to start small. It's okay to start small for the purpose of building self-discipline, okay? So if it is important to you to work out every day, I'm just gonna say, does it doesn't need to be for an hour? A lot of research has shown, honestly, that the longer you work out, it does not really have a positive effect on you. So you could probably get a really good workout in 20 minutes if you wanted to. So the first thing is to take that goal and look at it in the SMART acronym and, and make it something that is achievable and it's okay to start a little smaller. Now that you have the goal, what is your motivation? What is the, the big why? behind the goal, jot it down right now. Like, why is this goal important to you? What are the reasons why you want to achieve it? And if, if you want to get into this a little later in the day, that's fine. You can play this recording back or just write down the, the questions I'm asking you. And, and remember, I said that, that self-discipline is not just about motivation, but motivation has to get you started on the path to self-discipline. So that's why it's important for us to, to, to know what is our big why? 
So what, what, when you look at this goal, what is the one thing about the goal that makes it important to you? Why do you want to achieve it? Maybe there's more than one reason, right? So instead of just saying, you know, I want to exercise five days a week because I want to lose weight. Maybe it's something more meaningful. Like I want to exercise every day. So I have the energy to do things with my kids or so that I have the energy to, to do that, that trip with my spouse or partner, or I want to exercise every day to lower my cholesterol. So I no longer worry about heart attacks, right? What is the objective for you? But I'm going to, again, challenge you to go deeper into the meaning, go deeper into the motivation. Like, why is this really important to you? And maybe when you come up with one or two reasons, ask yourself again, well, why is that important? Because I think when you peel away those whys, you're going to get to the core, right? And for some of you, it could be, I want to exercise every day so I live a longer, more meaningful life, right? Like, you've got to get to something that's going to really connect with you. All right, number three, we're talking about ways to develop our disciplines. Number one was you have to have a goal, a smart goal, an attainable goal. Uh, number two, you have to identify why it's important to you and create some motivation around it. Get deep on that too. Get into an emotional place about why that goal could change your life. Number three, identify the obstacles. What is going to get in your way? So sweep for minds. Okay, so I'll just, if, I, if it's okay, I'm going to use me as an example again, right? So in this new lifestyle that I need to be on for my health, right? Because I have a lot of autoimmune issues. And so this is part of me getting healthy. I had to remove everything that would be bad for me to eat, bad for me from my site, from my kitchen. So I had to sweep for mine. I had to remove obstacles. I had to then replace the things that I couldn't eat with what I could eat, right? So what are your obstacles in your in terms of your goal? So right now, think about one or two things that could show up that could get in your way, okay? Because this is gonna happen to all of us, right? So even, even though I did the best I could to create a great environment when I'm home, I still have to go out there. I've, I've gone out to eat twice this weekend and I had to figure out how to navigate a menu, right? So, so what are your obstacles? What are your challenges? Think about that right now, write this down and figure out ways that you can get around that. So this is gonna set you up for more success. This is probably what gets in most people's way in terms of developing self, uh, excuse me, self-discipline, because they didn't think about what's going to get in their way. And I think in general, that's what that kind of messes us up in terms of our pursuit for the goal is we don't think about plan B and we don't think about the contingencies and we may not take enough time for us to think about what could get in our way. So that's why this is so important. All right, number four, you ready? It's replace old habits. You got to build discipline around the new habits that are going to bring you to the successful outcome, right? So when we're developing self-discipline, it's just intuitive, right? It's it's part of the process. In developing self-discipline, you're probably breaking some old habits, right? So be aware of that. Be aware uh, and be accepting of the fact that you're going to break some old habits. Those ha old habits do not serve you because that is why you're moving in this new direction with the school and, and creating self-discipline. So if, um, you know, if you're trying to, um, I don't know, stop smoking and you usually, if you're at work and you usually have a friend that you go outside and smoke with, and that's like your time to chat, you, you know, you're going to have to find a different way to have that conversation, right? You have to break the habit because the, the friend comes over and says, you want to go outside? And that's where you have to break that old habit, right? And that's just one example that came up uh, in my mind. So you have to identify that the behaviors and the mindset around the old habit so that you can break and disconnect from it because we want to replace them with new habits. So the other uh, thing that I want to share with you, the last, I guess, tip in developing self-discipline is, and we do this all the time in our work environment, right? I'll say tracking, but really it's monitoring your progress. And it's funny because I can talk to people about different things and I'll ask, you know, do you have it written down? Let me see your numbers, whatever. Um, and I'll hear things like, yeah, no, it's all up here. I figured it all out. 
I'm going to make this very clear. When I say monitor your progress, you should have it in a written form. And, and that is because when you write things down, there is a connection with your subconscious mind. And so it's not just monitoring and tracking how you're doing, but it's creating a journal. Whatever you want that journal to look like, it could be a notebook, it could be on your tablet or phone. Uh, I don't care if it's something you talk into, a uh, poster on your wall, but I'm here to tell you that you wanna monitor your progress and you want it to be in written form. And what are you monitoring? You're monitoring what you did, you're monitoring the result, and you're monitoring how you feel, how you feel. So my little journal, it came with my program actually. Um, it's so interesting, right? As I was thinking about this, I'm looking at what I'm doing, I did a little more research, and it was literally in this little journal that they gave me, it was those three things. It was, what did you do? What are the results? How are you feeling today? So that's important in tracking your progress in, in terms of developing your self-discipline because so much of self-discipline is about how we think and our thoughts are what create our feelings. So when you change your thought, you change how you feel. Is that true? Think about that for a minute. You could be really hot about something, maybe annoyed, but you change the way you look at it and suddenly you feel differently. Sometimes our feelings create our thoughts, right? So, so thoughts and feelings are, are constantly in a dance. So as you're developing self-discipline, it's important to be aware of your thinking, your thoughts, and how am I feeling about this, right? And I think that when you start to track that you're feeling good, better, clearer, motivated, you know, you're going to have all these positive emotions showing up, happy that's going to continue to build the momentum and the motivation to stay on track, which in, in itself is building your discipline, right? We can't develop self-discipline if we don't spend enough time on one task. So it's about the consistency. And I know it's still early in 2023. Uh, every other, you know, thing that hits your inbox is about goals and achieving goals and, you know, creating opportunities for the new year. And we've talked about that here uh, on Mojo. So what is it that's keeping you from really getting there? I think it's the self-discipline. So uh, that's why I thought it was really important for us to talk about this this morning, because over time, your self-discipline will strengthen, not only for this one goal that you wrote down this morning, but for all things. And what then comes in terms of, of that in your life, because you have developed the self-discipline, right? So a couple more bonus tips I'm going to give you this morning, because we still have a few minutes. I think another thing that is key to developing and sustaining self-discipline is to avoid distractions. Distractions show up like little parasites. And I don't mean to say that negatively about any person. I'm just saying distractions in general. It could be, it could be any kind of, of distraction. There are little parasites that come in and eat away at your self-discipline. And so we have to be aware of that. And, and trying to avoid distractions when you're beginning this process is really important because you need the momentum to get that car going up the hill. So it might make it harder to engage in this activity if you're constantly being distracted. Um, the other thing that is really important, and I think this goes back to the tracking, when you're tracking your results and you're tracking your progress and how you feel about it, I would love for you to celebrate your wins. I want you to recognize the small steps and the successes and really do something, you know, whether it's just talking to yourself uh, as if you were talking to another person and saying, um, you know what, Anna, you did really good today on that. You know, whatever it is, it's important for you to celebrate your successes so that you can feel the attachment to that because the subconscious is always looking for ways to please you. Let me say that again. Your unconscious mind is always looking for ways to please you. Your unconscious mind is here to serve you. So as you acknowledge wins and success, especially if you can do it outwardly, like out loud to yourself, believe me, I know it may seem weird, but look in the mirror and tell yourself you did a good job today and why you feel that way. It will move you forward in such a profound way um, and, and will actually help you rewire your brain. 
you will rewire and create new pathways in your brain that move you more on that path to the, the goal and the self-discipline. So acknowledge your wins, acknowledge your successes, um, and, and don't let fear of failure get in your way either um, because the process is not gonna be perfect, right? So you may have a couple of missteps, you might have to get back on track. And the, the important thing is that you get back on track. And so don't be so afraid. I think sometimes we become so afraid of failure that we don't even start. And we have to be aware that failure is just a, a, an opportunity to learn something. So don't be afraid of an occasional setback. Don't be afraid of something that gets you off, off track. Don't allow it to discourage you. Allow it to just give you information allow it to give you information. All right, so some key points here we talked about to develop self-discipline, choose a goal, find your motivation, get really clear about your big why, identify what could get in your way, replace old habits and thinking, and then monitor your progress. So I trust that this was helpful to you. I think that self-discipline is an essential quality and honestly, a key factor in achieving success at a high level. And I think it's a differentiator between the people who are living a big life and the people who are living a mediocre life. And so I know that you're here because you're not an average person. And so you want to achieve more. And I want to do whatever I can to support your success and encourage you as well. So Thank you again for being here. And if you found this to be helpful, share this video with someone. Uh, you'll find that it's on our Facebook page and it'll be on our, my YouTube channel. Invite people to join us on the um, Facebook group. It continues to grow, which is really exciting. And I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Have a powerful day and an awesome week.